Well, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to take what turns out to be my favorite jelly bean square bill that I've been trying to perfect over the past couple of years and we're going to finally make a mold for it so that I can duplicate it over and over and have plenty for myself and friends. And if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Franco. I'm a licensed professional engineer and an avid fisherman and lure designer and lure maker. And I make these videos to share the techniques that I use including physics and a little bit of engineering to be able to make lures that are predictable and catch fish. So these little jelly bean shaped crankbaits are lures I've been making on the lathe and each one of these represents a kind of an iteration in the experimentation process. I've been experimenting with depth of dive, how intense it wobbles and how much erratic action I can get in it without having it get completely unbalanced uh, and out of control. So this was my first one. And you can see it's pretty beat up. It actually caught me a lot of fish. This is not an unusual shape. There's lots of sort of round bodied kind of bullet shaped lures that, uh, that you can buy anywhere. But I really wanted to know what kind of difference it would make to have a lure that was slightly pointed or a lure that was very blunt on the end, maybe even blunter. And I started to move towards pointier end sections with a deeper gouged out belly area. I moved to a larger lures. I changed bib angles. I went to even larger, even and narrower, bulkier. I really tried to explore as much of the changes that I could make and still have a viable lure. And my goal was to find one that was really worthy of making a mold out of so I could repeat it over and over. And one that would be useful to me, not only here in the lake and other lakes, but out in salt water as well. This one has a deeper scoop and it's pretty pointed at the very front. I kept the really large bib. This gives me a really big movement, a lot of thump on the end of my rod, and it will tend to sort of deviate off like a straight course, what bass fishermen call hunting. And the dive depth is right at two feet, maybe a little deeper with a real long cast, but that's perfect for here and the Gulf of Mexico. So before we move on to making a mold, Let's go ahead and take a look at some underwater footage. So as usual, to start off on the mold building process, I start out with a simple little clay base framed in in some Lego blocks. And if you've never seen this done before, it's actually a simple process. I'm going to embed this lure in the clay to the halfway point right on the body. And then I'll create a two-part mold, very much like this one, that allow me to pour the lure out of two-part resin. My intention is to be able to place the dive bib in the mold so it's held perfectly in place at just the right angle and nicely plumb to the body and then just be able to pour the lure around the bib. That technique will allow me to make lures quicker and more accurately. I'll be able to maintain the dive angle and a nice stable lure. The tricky part is that you have to encase as much of that dive bib as possible. It really can't be part of the two part portion of uh, the mold. I'm going to make a mold that is kind of semi-solid at the end where the bib is and then the other part opens up. I've never done this before but theoretically it should work. Now step one is to place the lure in the best spot possible to make it as easy as possible to encase as much of the bib as possible in a solid block of silicone. So I'm going to draw a line in the clay of where I want the mold to be solid and not too part. So now I know that's where I need to embed this. I'll start digging out some clay and we'll get back to this when I'm a little closer. All right, I've got it embedded uh, halfway into the clay. Now I just need to make sure the seam line is nice and straight and up against the body so I don't get any weird seams 
when I pour my lures and you can use just about anything for this. So that's pretty close to about as good as I need it. The next step is to include some alignment keys so that portion that comes off will realign really nicely. And you'll notice that I've drawn lines on the side of the mold to mark where my original pencil line was in the clay. And you can use just about anything to make little depressions. I'll sometimes use the back of a pen or a sharpie. But this time I want to use this sort of rectangular shape because I think I'll be able to get more in here. I won't be able to put any here because this is going to be solid silicone. And about a quarter inch deep is all you need. Now I'm going to form a sprue. And I want to be able to pour these lures from the tail slightly on the back. This way I have a much less chance of it forming bubbles on any of these sort of under shelf pour areas. And I'll just make sort of a half cone out of this clay to make the sprue. And there you go. That should make a nice little sprue to be able to pour this lure. Alright, next step is to build up the box and pour the first half. I made sure that I had about a quarter of an inch at the highest point of the lure. This way I've got plenty of wall thickness and this mold should last a long time. After mixing up the two parts silicone really well, I like to drizzle just a thin coat on the body of the lure just to keep it from getting bubbles up against the actual lure body. And then a quick shot with the blow dryer takes care of anything on the surface. And then it's just a matter of pouring in the rest. I start on one edge and let it fill in on its own. Here it is sped up four times. Now I'll leave it overnight to set. <laughs> It sat for uh, overnight and it's rock solid. So now what we need to do is pull the clay out. And since it's kind of warm in here today, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the mini fridge and cool it off a little bit. The clay will tend to come off in one big piece if it's cool. I think it'll come out now in one good chunk. Not bad. We'll have to do a little bit of cleaning, but not a whole lot. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but there you can still see the remnants of the pencil line I made, dividing where the mold will go from two-part to solid. And if you've done any work with a two-part silicone, you'll know that it won't stick to anything except for silicone. So if I were to pour silicone on top of this set silicone, it would just bond and it would just be one block of silicone. But I'm gonna use that to my advantage because I'm going to go ahead and put mold release, actually Vaseline in this case, on everything this side of that line. And then on this side of the line, I won't put anything. And what I'm hoping is that the new silicone will bond to that section and become one block of silicone. This way, when I pull my lure out, it'll have an, a slot in that solid block just for the dive bib. That's the theory. Let's keep going. All right, so the next step is to put a mold release agent here and I'm just going to use some Vaseline just petroleum jelly and I've got to put it everywhere except for on the other side of this line right here so I'm going to be very careful to make a nice straight line because my intention is to cut along that line later on and then I've got to coat everything and be sure that everything has this Vaseline on it. Otherwise, we'll have some issues getting this thing apart. The only thing I don't have to coat is the lure itself. It'll peel right off that. All right, that'll have it. Uh, hopefully you can see how shiny the uh, silicone rubber is. You don't want to leave lumps of Vaseline in there because the next half will kind of pick that up and you'll end up with that, that lump cast in the silicone. I like to stir up the separate components. Some of them are so heavy, it's hard to stir.
right, you'll notice that I've put the sprue back in and then I've also put some uh, little pieces of solder to create vents. Now we'll just go ahead and do the drizzle trick. Now we'll hit it with the blow dryer a bit. And now we can do the full pour. There's something really satisfying watching this stuff pour in. All right, no waste. I love it. A little bit of a mess though. Not too bad. So now I'm just gonna make sure this is level and then we'll come back and we should be able to pour our first lure in about eight hours. All right, I'm back in the shop. It's about eight o'clock at night. I just, I can't wait for tomorrow. I really need to see what this looks like and maybe I can even get my first casting tonight. Let's pull this thing apart. I don't remember which end is which. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll, this looks like it's good and glued together here. So I'm imagining that this end is our opening end. All right, that looks good. Now I just need to mark where to cut. If this works, we'll have a solid lump of uh, silicone right here. And then we have the uh, two part right here. I gotta be careful not to get too aggressive here with this cut. See how we're doing. All right, there we go. That's pretty good. Nice clean cut. And I'll have to put the little, pull the little metal deals out for the vents. And now to pull this guy out of here and he should be able to just pull right out. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. A little bit of trimming and clean up the sprue a little bit. We're going to be ready to pour our first lure. All right, we're going to need a wiring harness. So this will have to be a one-off harness here until I have a chance to make a jig for this. Let's go back to the twister. All right, there it is. All right, we'll put this round split shot right on to our wire harness. And that sits right above the center rotation. And if you go back and watch the underwater footage, you'll see that that belly hook never moves. The whole lure is moving around and that belly hook is just kind of hanging there. And that tells you that that belly hook is right at the center of uh, rotation. All right, so before we get too far along, I've got to set the dive bib in it. And to be sure that the resin, I will actually anchor it in. I'm gonna drill two little holes right up here. And when the resin pours in and goes through those holes, that basically will rivet it in place. Now, I can stick this thing right in its slot. And that's not going anywhere. And we should be ready to put the lid on it and pour. Alright, it's just a matter of mixing up some two-part resin and pouring the first one. Let's see how it comes out.
So I got a little bit of a mushroom coming up out of the sprue. That's a good sign. It means I got enough in there and there's not too much, so no waste. All right, well, it's getting late, but I'm jonesing to open this thing up. It's been about 20 minutes, so it should be set, I hope. So let's go ahead and loosen up this panel. <laughs> All right, looks like the vents worked great. I should be able to just yank it out. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. So just a little bit of cleanup and it should look just like the original. All right, so I'm totally stoked about getting going on production here. I really am tempted to build three or four or five of them. And I've even prepared some additional wire harnesses. And you see, I made a little paper template so I can repeat these things pretty easily. But I'm gonna have to impose a little patience because while this really looks pretty doggone good, it looks like it's mimicked uh, this one absolutely perfectly. Uh, you don't know until it's in the water. So what I'm going to do is put on some little weights uh, to mimic the hooks and I'm going to take it down to the dock and at the very least get it tuned so it returns straight and we'll check the action on it see if it has the action that I expected. All right, as usual, it's really breezy down here. Uh, so I'm kind of hiding behind a tree. So we're going to go out to the end of the dock and hopefully we'll get a good shot with a little bit of worthwhile audio. All right. It's floating, right? All right. It looks perfect. Look at that wobble. It's nice. It might be pulling a little left. All right. I like it. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a cast. And let me see if it comes back straight. So far, so good. Man, that thing's coming back straight to me. Let's see if I can overpower it. No, that's as hard as I can pull right there without breaking the line. Look at that, and it actually hunts. It does a quick shot to the left, quick shot to the right. Awesome. Gotta be pretty happy with that. It's not easy to get a perfectly swimming crankbait first time out of a mold. But if you make a good mold out of a good lure, you stand a good chance. At least it'll put you in the ballpark every time. All right, so this is gonna have to be it. Thanks to everybody for watching and thanks to everybody who's been commenting and just staying engaged. I'll see you guys next Friday.